This video tutorial is on the commercial uses of plant hormones. We've been using synthetic versions of plant hormones for various purposes for decades, even before we knew anything about how they bring about effects in plants. For many of the plant hormones we use, we still don't actually know how they work. We just know that they do and we make use of that. Now, in this video tutorial, uh, we're going to look at some of the most common economical uses of plant hormones um, relating specifically to auxin, ethene and gibberellin. But if you look in your textbooks and you look on the internet, I'm sure you'll find many, many more examples of commercial uses of plant hormones. So first of all, auxins. Auxins are used in a wide variety of ways commercially. Firstly, um, auxins are sprayed onto developing fruits to prevent abscission. This means that the fruits stay on the plant longer so they can be harvested when they are fully ripe. Secondly, um, auxins can be sprayed onto flowers um, where it can initiate the formation of fruits even if the flower has not been pollinated. And this means that essentially we can get fruits which do not contain seeds. Um, so, for example, in California, um, grapes are often treated like this, producing seedless fruits um, from a fairly uniform, large size, um, which only ripen at the same time. So obviously really, really useful um, for commercial use or um, sales in supermarkets. Thirdly, auxins can be applied to the um, cut lower end of the shoot where it stimulates root production. Um, this is widely used in the vegetative um, propagation of um, many varieties of plants. And finally, um, synthetic auxins are widely used as selective um, herbicides. For reasons that are not fully understood, they kill broad-leaved plants such as um, dandelions and daffodils um, and daisies, but not grass and cereal crops. It's thought that they work because they can get into the cells through the auxin transporters in the plasma membranes, um, but not out of them um, through a different set of transporters. Um, but it's still not quite clear exactly how that all works. The second hormone um, that um, has a variety of commercial uses is ethene, um, the most common of which being to promote ripening. Um, so fruits such as bananas can be harvested before they're ripe, allowing them to then be transported large distances without um, deterioration. And then when they're close to their sort of sales point, they can then be exposed to ethene, which causes them to ripen. So, for example, they're plucked off the tree in Tanzania in the green form on the left hand side. And then when they sort of arrive at our supermarket, supermarkets here in the UK, they then be sprayed with ethene causing them to ripen um, so that we're more likely to buy them. Finally then, gibberellins. Um, gibberellin can be sprayed onto crops, uh, fruit crops, to promote their growth. And that's essentially what's being shown in the picture there on the slide. Um, so it can be also used to produce seedless grapes by causing the fruits to grow, even if they've not been fertilised, so similar to the effects of auxin. Um, the gibberellin also increases the movement of sucrose into the growing fruits, which in turn brings in more water by osmosis. And as a result, um, the grapes are sort of larger and sweeter. Secondly, um, gibberellin is sprayed onto some types of citrus trees to allow the fruit to stay onto the tree for longer. And again, this allows the grower to let the fruit grow to its maximum size um, before picking it. The third um, sort of commercial use of gibberellin, main commercial use, um, is that they're widely used to increase the yield of sucrose from sugarcane. Um, so sugarcane produces sucrose in its stems. And in cool temperatures, the stems do not grow as long. So less sucrose is stored. The application of gibberellin makes the stems grow longer. So there's more sucrose present. And finally, um, gibberellin is used to stimulate germination in seeds. Um, so this can be used in um, beer making industries um, where gibberellin may be sprayed onto barley grains to make them germinate. 
And then the germinating grains produce enzymes that break down the starch to maltose. And the action of yeast on the maltose then produces the alcohol. So a whole wide range of commercial uses. And as I say, um, these are just a few. Certainly, if you look in your textbook um, or you um, have a little search on the Internet, you will find many more. <laughs>